Welcome back to Third Phase of Moon. Blake Cousins here. We've got a special report for you. We're here with the legends. They came to the Third Phase of Moon base right here in the Big Island of Hawaii. Jim Goodall's about to, you know, we're heading them to the airport. We got about a half hour, but we wanted to go over some incredible evidence that's just come into Third Phase of Moon. Jim, thanks for joining us. And Michael Schratt with the case files. Wow, incredible stuff. What a team. Uh, we've been working on some things behind the scenes in regards to crash retrievals. But while we're here, we received a video this morning that I want to run by you guys. You guys are aerospace historians <laughs> and uh, you guys do really good work. I thought, hey, why not uh, share it with the boys right now while we got it in real time? So let's roll it. Let's take a look at this and I want to get your reaction as we play this. We don't have much information, but it's coming in from a commercial airliner of what looks to be some kind of fleet. Guys, take a look at this. What do you make out of it? Uh, well, what I can see, uh, no wings, no visible means of propulsion, no ailerons, no tail, no horizontal surfaces. I don't see any heat signature. It's an unknown at this point. Okay. Not enough information, but certainly uh, not a conventional 172 by any means. You know, we're seeing like yeah. a fleet of these uh, UFOs, and I think um, they were stating during the Navy encounters and I think it was Ryan Graves who said that they saw UFOs every day and there were like hundreds of them out there. Yeah. Uh, again, we're seeing these silhouetted uh, cigar shaped craft and they're multiple. I'm trying to make out exactly how much, uh, you know, at least a couple dozen. You know, again, what, what's your thought process? I'm kind of rolling out CGI. I'm pretty sure what we're looking there, it, it's legit. Do you think it could be like maybe just some uh, etch marks on the, on the passenger? Uh, plain window that no, no, it would it, it, it would it would be totally different if something that close and it's focused far away mm -hmm. that's true it would be soft or probably maybe even invisible if, it's, if you're uh, close enough to the camera they look like they're locked into position though they're not moving with relation to another so maybe that's something as well yeah, you, if it were like etching on the, I agree, uh, on the window, and, and as the camera person zooms in, the, you would get some kind of parallax, and obviously these etches would blur out. It seems that, uh, again, it all matches up properly. It's just the question is, what is it? What do you think, uh, as far as assets are concerned, is this, could this be some kind of military exercise? Of, uh, kind of I mean, like it could, it could, it could be a military exercise, not necessarily an Earth-based military exercise. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, Do we have an approximate altitude? You know, I, I'm looking at it a little closer here. Is that some kind of landmass um, below? I, I see some kind of maybe geography down there uh, during uh, the clip. I'm guesstimating, you know, 20 to 30,000 feet yeah. in elevation yeah, 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 here. So no conventional drone could be up in that altitude. Uh, weather balloons, again, they have the cigar-shaped uh, feature to it. So yeah, but not that many. And and they would, yeah, you know, they would be if it was, if they're weather balloons, they would they would be uh, either raised, you know, going up in altitude or coming down. They're probably not static. They don't seem to be. Um, we can't tell if there's any wind there at all. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you, you're a pilot, Michael. When you're up at that kind of altitude, is, is, can wind be calm up there? Is it usually a lot of turbulence? Mm, well, I can't climb that high in my bird that mm. I used to have. So, uh, but yeah, there, there'd be wind up there though. There would be a, a prevailing wind or a tailwind, and these would be going with the prevailing wind, uh, but these appear to be locked into position. Again, uh, we don't see any wings or tail uh, signs of any kind of uh, conventional propulsion. And we're not. You know, it's not shot on flare, but again, we're not seeing any exhaust or anything coming off these things. So, I don't know. It's one of the craziest videos we received in the past uh, month right now. If this is indeed legit, that it seems that there's a swarm of UFOs in close proximity to this uh, airliner. Right, I would like to see them move and maybe that's the thing drift drift around. A They're little just bit. locked in because even even in tight formations, let's say the Blue Angels or Thunderbirds. You know, they, they, you know, they do move mm -hmm. back and forth and up and down a little bit. 
and those those don't appear to be changing position. They're all like Michael said, they're all static. But there's too many too many of them to be uh, an anomaly or swamp gas or weather balloon. They don't appear to be reflecting light either, so they're more dark gray in color. It's interesting to note just due to the fact that the video only lasts a few seconds. And you know, in social media, sometimes these TikToks and uh, these shorts, people are just uploading just a few seconds of video just to get the point across. But I'd imagine the video lasts for quite some time. If you're gonna see a fleet like that, I would think that the person shooting it would continue to roll. Unfortunately, this is only uh, the video that we've obtained at this moment, but I'm sure maybe in the next uh, couple days that we might actually obtain the original footage in the full extent. And that would be, uh, a again, more proper in the investigation in regards to this. Now, you know what's interesting? You've been working on investigating historic archives of UFOs, and you were, uh, uh, you were, as you're watching this, we were both discussing like fleets of UFOs, and you have a particular case file in regards to the exact same thing. So let's uh, pull up some of uh, your historical uh, okay. archives because I, I find it really interesting that that this happens quite often. But let's go into this one, um, the exclusive. UFO fleet. Go ahead, Michael. Yep. Okay. So, backstory on these: these were pulled from the Gray Barker Collection, in Clarksburg, West Virginia. It wasn't easy to get these, but uh, over about a 10-year period, I was able to collect maybe all 320 of them. So, do we want to read these? Do you want to read these? Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, August 14th, 1950. Never reported anywhere before. In Lugano, England, 10 people, including a priest, police chief, and physics professor, witnessed up to 100 UFOs sailing through the sky and making a humming organ tone. Wow, well, you know, we just watched the video, and, right. see, and look at the, how the artist's representation of this fleet, it's actually the same kind of darkness and kind that of, kind yeah. of silhouette yeah. action. And they're in the same sort of locked position, you know? Mm. They're not varying in position. So it's not unprecedented to see and hear about these fleet UFOs. Jim, what do you make of that? I mean, uh, yeah, lo looking at the, the video and then looking at the illustration that uh, Michael has, uh, you know, here they're depicted as all being all lined up in a row, uh, <laughs> and, you know, f fairly symmetrical as where the video has them all together, but you know, in a random position, so. Very, uh, very similar to the video we just saw. And what date did this happen? 1950. 1950. So, you know, it's incredible. Decades apart, we have uh, the same kind of s similarities. Yep. What's up? Is this the same? This is a different this event. Wow. Uh, October 12th, 1796, That's on Columbus back Day. 1776. Yep. 1796. Wow. Over 170 years ago, Canadian observers reported an astonishing fleet of airships, UFOs, with portholes and visible occupants sailing over the Bay of Fundy from Pacific Stars and Stripes. You know, that, that's incredible that these uh, archives go way back and you're able to discover this right. jam from, 19, uh, from 1796. We, I mean, you, you go to uh, other parts of the um the third world and the fourth world. There are petroglyphs and yep. carvings in stone depicting flying objects, flying things, uh, uh, what appears to be look like a, a traditional UFO flying saucer type look. Uh, large uh, humanoids, I mean humanoids with large heads and big eyes, which sort of looks like the greys. And that's going back thousands of years. Yeah, yeah. And the other question, uh, you know, Michael, we were looking at it earlier today, is all the, uh, the way the, wa the rock is interlocked, almost like it was a fluid or it was malleable. And that goes back, what, 10,000 years, 8,000 mm. years? What could these, um, this is uh, over, the Canadian observers uh, reported this. And I mean, that's a long time ago. That's us. Yeah. Way before the Wright brothers. Yeah. Way before. You know, dirigibles have been around for a while. So right. could it have been like a bunch of dirigibles? Um, not, know, not, in seven, yeah. not in 1796, no. Yeah. So, you know, so what else could it be? A previously unknown high-tech civilization, which has already been here for thousands of years, that could be one explanation for this. You know, that's uh, one of the hypotheses that uh, people have come to, and I kind of have to uh, go down that road that 
you know, some of these uh, technologies are maybe just something from an ancient civilization right. that we've yet to discover. Or, you know, some people say that they're, you know, time travelers from the future. You just, it it uh, could be us. It could be us. And we're coming back to see just how screwed up the 2020s yeah, were. And that's right. Well, let's take a look at this one. You got uh, more evidence in regards to this. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. More, again, the similarities yeah. in regards to the video we just shared earlier and these historical cases. Tell us okay, about this, so this is Part of this 1947 wave, which was huge, and also 1952 was a huge wave as well. June 29th, 11 a.m., near Pendleton, Oregon, Miss Morton Elder was astonished to see seven flying umbrellas streak through the sky at great speed. It's great, I love these, they're great. So was this uh, before the crash? This was, well, this would have been the same year as the crash in Roswell, but uh, June 29th, so this is just prior to. About a week before. Just prior wow. to, yeah. yep. The sightings are very, again, similar. Do you think it's a possibility that these, uh, one of these craft were involved in the Roswell crash? One of these things malfunctioned or they're brought down? Uh, interesting that I have a, report from a flight attendant and she sent me a sketch. I don't know if I should mention her name. I think she wants to stay under wraps, but uh, she sent me a drawing and it looks almost identical to this. This same umbrella with the points on the bottom, that's what she drew too. Wow. Yep. Mm-hmm. And there's, there's, there's too many, too many things that are similar or, or identical to what other people you know, see to say it's, it's just a coincidence. No, there's no in this in this type of uh, area of, of interest. There aren't any coincidences. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. what we're seeing is there because we're supposed to see it. Absolutely. You know, again, it it looks like it's the same video. If this were in an airplane uh -huh. looking out that window, the similarity is just undeniable. And again, over you know centuries, these fleets have been uh, spotted. Again. We're not seeing any hostility. It no. looks almost like an invasion, like you mentioned, like a like there's some kind of, you know, strategic maneuvering going on. But again, no hus no hostile. Uh, I, I I honestly believe if the visitors wherever they can come from, if they were hostile, we would have known it a long time ago. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Morphly, this one, the saucer V-shape. Yep, May 15th, 1954, Southampton, England, an amateur astronomer observed 18 saucers flying in a perfect V formation at tremendous speed, never varying an inch out of position. Same thing. I'll bet you it was uh, no sonic boom. What do you think, Jim? No think, sonic I boom. Think the same thing. Yep, yep, yep. So they just, just walk into formation. Yeah. There's no wavering whatsoever, yeah. just like the video. And not a single inch the person's. So even, even though they're all separate entities, they, they may act as a uh -huh. as one organism. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's a defensive position. Maybe it's just uh, how how they're able to travel across the uh, the universe. Well, the, our present day uh, drone technology, they, they speak to each other in these great, uh, incredible displays by hundreds of drones in coordination to create, uh, you know, figures or geometric shapes. And maybe, you know, and this goes back to the 1700s that this, maybe they are communicating with each other to know exactly what uh, position they need to be in, and then they lock in solid. All right, let's uh, pull this next one up, but Michael's uh, brought in, again, crazy more fleets. August 28th, 1954, Oklahoma City. Hundreds of people witnessed a fleet of 15 saucers which first flew in V formation, then changed smoothly into a semicircular formation and doubled their speed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's by intent, it's by design. These things are, they have an intent behind them. This is not haphazard, no doubt. Well, they're not just balloons no. up there, to, uh, just streaming with the wind and flowing anywhere they want. Right. These things are uh, controlled by something. Now, the, the original video showed them a lot of them there, but they were in random locations. It, it, it's, it's too bad you know, we didn't get a view of it if they were lined up. So it would, mm -hmm. it would just because uh, every you know the all the other illustrations from the uh, even 200 and some odd years ago. Uh, indicate some type of formation versus mm. just mm -hmm. uh, random. Yeah, that last video, there were it wasn't much of a formation, but they were seemed in locked, solid uh, sequence. But again, we 
uh, unfortunately, there's we need to get more of that video, and we're definitely going to try and allocate that. A yep. flying diamond? What's this all about? Uh, May 13th, 1952, Greenville, South Carolina. Amateur astronomers caught sight of four saucer discs flying in a diamond formation, making turns and other maneuvers without varying position. Again, locked into place. I really like that the amateur astronomer uh, aspect as well, because some of those guys are like the front line of yep. ufology. They're out there just looking at celestial events, planets, but since they're observing the skies, you know they're they're trained to look for anomalies, and uh, we we, we receive uh, these. It was, it was almost like the, the Shoemaker Levy uh, comet that hit the Jupiter. It was found by an amateur uh, astronomer and then verified by huh. you know uh, government-funded astronomers. But it was it was I think I think I think he was a teenager, I believe. August 1st, 1952, Albuquerque, New Mexico. A Scripps Howard reporter in plane reported 10 glowing round UFOs flying two abreast in perfect precision. So again, same thing, yep. The, the fleets, the history behind this uh, still blows me away. We got one more, Michael, what's this all about? Okay, January 9th, 1958. Marion, Illinois, startled construction workers looked up to see seven UFOs flying in single file at a slow pace, their glow pulsating at times. It's just, uh, it amazes me the deep history that you get into uncovering uh, the phenomenon and finding these files. Like these are real people uh, doing these, you know, sketches of the experiences they have. Incredible stuff, guys. I know we got to get Jim Goodall to the airport. Uh, he's on assignment in regards to some crash retrieval uh, projects we're working on. Jim, have a safe flight. I will. We got to get yeah. going here, but man, uh, thanks for joining us and chiming in. I will do it again. Uh, I don't know when, but it'll probably be soon. Um, I just been, I love Hawaii to begin with, and this is the first time I've uh, been to this end of the big island. Now I've gone all the way around it. I've gone all the way around Maui because I've ridden around Oahu multiple times, hundreds of times. Uh, but it's just, the big island's fascinating, and everything about it. And it has the cousin brothers, and it has the infamous Alex. That was fun yesterday as well. So. Absolutely. And uh, I want to say, uh, I want to thank the cousin brothers and my dear friend Michael Schrant for uh, our, our, our get together here, yeah. and, we have, here we have, and we have to do it again, and then mm -hmm. we have oh, and then we have the other one. Oh, they, uh -huh. must be, they must be twins. From uh, behind the scenes. Yep. Yep. Yeah. All I good. All good. All good. It. Okay. All okay. Right. Well, that's uh, third phase of Moon. Uh, thanks for joining us, everybody from around the world. Keep your eyes on the skies. Stay tuned. We've got more episodes coming shortly. We'll see you. Aloha.